Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop. Welcome to part two of our Christmas in July 2021 called All the Trimmings. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and check out last Monday's video for part one. This week we're working on part two. We've got the free pattern in the description box and this year we've added something new. We've added our cross stitch. You can check out the Fat Quarter Shop floss too and it's gonna have all the information and we are on week two and it's the stocking row. So let's get started. Just like I did in row one, I have pulled all my fabrics for my second row, cut a little snippet, put it in my quilter's journal to keep myself organized. It's more important on this row since there are more fabrics. Now we're gonna cut our background fabric and I'm gonna show you how I cut it using half square triangles. So what I will do is have my fold of my background up here, my salvage at the bottom. I have it ironed really nice. And for this one, I'm gonna cut one three inch strip. Then I will cut one two and a half inch strip. And our last strip is a two inch strip. Then from there, I can move all of my background fabric out of the way and we're gonna sub cut all of these strips. So if you look at page two, you can see that we're gonna make four half square triangles using triangle paper. So to do that, I'm gonna cut four three inch squares to make that work. If you want to do it the traditional way, you could just follow the pattern and do four two and a half inch squares, but I'm gonna do four three inch squares and show you how to do that in a second. So for A, I have four three inch squares to start and I'm gonna cut four two and a half inch squares for a different part of the pattern for fabric A. So I'm going to just sub cut that down to two and a half inch and I need four more two and a half inch squares. So I will cut at the five inch and I make sure my creative grids line is lined up here and here. Move it back to the two and a half and these will also be A's. So I'll just put them over here and I'll know which one is smaller. For my B's, I need four two and a half by eight so I can get one of those from this. So that's my B. So from the second two and a half inch strip, I'm going to trim off the salvage over here, rotate it without moving the fabric too much, cut another eight inch rectangle, and that's gonna give you two. So from here, we have four two and a half by eight inch rectangles that I'm gonna label as B. For my C, we need four two and a half by four inch rectangles. So I will cut two four and a half inch rectangles, which will give me four because I have two layers. So this will be our C. Now we need eight two inch squares. I might need this, so I'm gonna just kind of save this to the side. This is already two inches, so I will trim off the salvage. And since this is a solid, you can tell where the salvage starts and stops by where the dots are on the fabric. We'll rotate that and we're gonna cut at the six inch, the four inch, and the two inch, and that gives us six squares, but we need two more, so we'll cut that and that gives us eight two inch squares for our fabric D. So before I started cutting, I kind of thought through how many strips I needed. Now from here, we need one, one and a half by nine and a half inch rectangle and four one and a half inch squares. So what I'm gonna do is put this back together and cut this down to one and a half inches wide. And since I kind of moved it apart, I can just cut another straightened line and then cut one and a half. And then I'm gonna cut this fold off. So from here, I'm gonna cut one, one and a half by nine and a half inch rectangle. So I will just trim the side off. Turn this around and then rotate your ruler to go horizontally and measure here and here. And that is going to be our fabric E. And then for F, we need four one and a half inch squares. 
start with a clean line on the edge. Cutting is my favorite part and I really do take my time when I'm cutting. So from here, I'm gonna subcut at the six inch, the four and a half, the three inch, and the one and a half. And a lot of people ask why I do it this way and I kind of just learned that way. So now we have cut all of our background. Now we're gonna work on the stocking trims. And so you can tell that it does matter which direction you want your stripes to go if you want them to go the same direction. So they can either go up and down or left to right. I'm going to go ahead and put all my stripes the same direction and stack all four of my layer cake squares. They are nice and ironed and there's no wrinkles. And for our half square triangle, we're gonna use for fabric G, we're gonna use a three inch square. So I'm just going to cut a three inch square out of one corner and I will explain how we do that in a little bit. That is our fabric G. Now for our top, if you want your stripes to go up and down, you would cut it two by five and a half this way. So two inches down and five and a half this way. If you want your stripes to run horizontally, you would cut them this way. So just think that through. We're gonna do ours where they go vertically. I'm just gonna make sure I have two inches this way and five and a half inches this way. And I will just cut right here and then we have this big piece of layer cake that's left over that we can use for another project from here i'm going to subcut it to two inches and from here i'm going to rotate and subcut that five and a half inches and i love using this perfect tin ruler because it's got simple lines and that's all we need for this pattern now we're going to work on the body of the stocking and if you look at the four fabrics we picked Three of them are not directional, but one of them is. So I'm gonna show you, if you want all of your doves to go the same way, how to cut them. I would turn your mat around, and you want all of your skinny cuts to go horizontally with your doves. So we're gonna start and go backwards. And we're gonna first cut a little straightening strip. We're gonna cut one two and a half inch strip. Another two and a half inch strip. So horizontally, we are cutting the skinnier size on all of them. And then your last cut is four by four and a half. And you're gonna cut this at four inches. And then we're gonna rotate this and we're gonna subcut these down. And I'm gonna cut a two and a half by six and a half inch rectangle. And that is going to be our fabric J. So I'm going a little bit out of order, which is okay. Now we will cut a two and a half by four and a half inch rectangle. And if you don't care which way the dove goes, you don't have to do all of this. This is just showing you in case you do have a directional fabric. This is our fabric K, and then we're gonna cut this last piece four by four and a half. So we've already cut four inches. Now we're gonna cut four and a half, and this will be big enough to save for a future project. And we will label this as our fabric I. So now I have everything cut and labeled on my design board so that we can easily piece our block. We're gonna do the first two steps on page one of our free pattern. And in this demonstration, I'm showing you how to make one stocking. So we're gonna demo the one on the left. So we're gonna find that fabric and our fabric H. We need two fabric D squares to go on either side. So we'll put these here. For this unit, we need a fabric C. That's what's great about fat quarter shop patterns is that everything has words and it also has letters, so it makes it easy. And when you lay this out, you want the four inch sides to match because that would not fit. 
So from here, I'm going to put my fabrics right sides together and pin on each side. This is the easiest part of the block because all of these seams, we will be using a quarter inch foot for a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm gonna sew my seams with a 1.8 stitch length. So I just put it a little bit slightly to the left of the two on my knob. I'm gonna use a quarter inch foot that has a guide and just sew my quarter inch seam. Now we're gonna press these seams. What I like to do is set my seam by putting my iron nice and flat on the piece without rocking it. Do that on both pieces. And then we're gonna press the cuff piece toward the black. So put the tip of your iron right on that seam and just let it sit. Do the same thing on the other side, making sure to get the seam really nice and flat. And see how this is lifting up? If you want that to lay really flat, you can put this clapper on it and the heat will be absorbed by the wood and it will become flat. We're gonna do the opposite here. We're gonna press toward the gray on this one and you can just finger press that down and get that nice and flat. Now we're gonna move to page two and we're gonna do the corner squares on step one and step two. Just to save time, it's always good when you're following a pattern if you can consolidate steps to do it. So I'm gonna take a fabric J that is the gray dot. And if you are doing this with the dove print, you would just follow to make sure you have your fabric going the direction that we have it in the pattern. Then we're gonna take from our fabric A stack, one of the smaller squares. So a two and a half inch square from that stack, put it on this corner and we're going to pin. I'm gonna pin twice since this is a bigger square than last week's. And from here, you want to not see the gray from the front and from the back, you don't wanna see the black. So that's our first step. Our next one is to take a fabric K rectangle and a fabric F square, and we're gonna place this on the bottom left. Following the pattern, we're gonna stitch a line from the bottom left of the black square to the top right. And I'm just following the pattern I have washi tape on my machine and you can watch video one of this series to see how I did that. So you just put your foot down and stitch from corner to corner and you will keep this little point aligned with your washi tape all the way up. The next piece, we're gonna sew from the top left to the bottom right. From here, we're gonna trim a quarter inch away from that stitched line, and I'm just gonna use the line on my Creative Grids ruler. The reason I use Creative Grids in all of my projects is they have grip dots, and when you put your ruler down and you try to shift, it will not move. And from here, we can press. Now, if you look at the pieces that we put under the clapper, now everything lies nice and flat. And we're gonna press both of these toward the black, which is our background. So set your seam by just letting your iron sit on it, nice and steady. Put the tip of your iron right on that seam and just press down. And you're gonna notice I'm not rocking my iron. If you start rocking your iron like this, you will stretch your fabric. And nobody wants a stretchy quilt block. So just nice and steady. Now I'm gonna leave this clapper on here and we'll move to the next step. The next step, you can either piece according to the pattern or cheat and use a half square triangle paper by triangles on a roll, which is what I prefer to do. So we're using H200 and I'm going to cut one square off of my paper roll. You need four for the entire pattern, but for one block, you only need one. So I'm just gonna cut one square off, making sure to cut directly on that line. And then I'll just move this aside and to keep it closed up, I just put washi tape on there and it won't ruin the paper. We're gonna pull a fabric A square that's a background and we're gonna pull that same fabric that we used at the beginning. 
We're gonna put these right sides together, which is the most important step. And we're gonna put this paper right on here. And when we are making this, we actually only have to make one half square triangle. You can stitch on both dotted lines or to save time, you can just stitch on one, which is what we're going to do. I'm gonna move my stitch length to a 1.5 and making my stitch length shorter is going to make the paper easier to pull off later and i'm going to just stitch directly on that dotted line from here we only need one half square triangle for each block so we're going to use this piece right here and normally you would make two by stitching on this line but for this block we only need one so I'm gonna cut this off and we don't need this piece. Then on the sides, we're gonna cut directly on that paper where the lines were. And doing it this way versus the way the pattern is written is gonna give you a more accurate result. But if you want to do it according to the pattern, that's fine too. From here, I will crease my paper back and just pull this off. If you pull this off and it doesn't pull right off, then just shorten your stitch length in the future. Now I'm going to set my seam like I always do and press toward the black. It is important to follow the pressing arrows that we have in the pattern so everything will nest when we get our stocking all put together. And from here, I will clip the little dog ears. And that looks pretty flat, actually, so I don't even think it needs the clapper. Now we're gonna build our stocking, and using a design board is great because it's gonna hold everything together. So I'm gonna build it out just so you can see how it's starting to form. All of these grays will match, and then this bottom half square triangle will match your cuff, and then your last piece is your fabric B. So what I'm going to do is we're gonna sew this to this first, and I'm gonna pin twice and we can also sew this piece to this piece if the quarter inch seam here and the quarter inch seam here match it will line up so you can cheat by marking a quarter inch seam here and marking a quarter inch seam here and this friction pin will disappear with heat later so you want this and this to touch so i will put this right sides together and again, I always pin at the left and the right to start. And then from here, when you're looking at it, you can see you've got two lines. You want them to touch. So what you can do is put your pin right where that line is and have it come out at that little line. Put the pin right where that line is over here. Pull the pin out, place it back. And hopefully when you go over that seam, it will line up. And from here, we can sew this seam with a quarter inch foot and stop, and sew this seam with a quarter inch foot and stop. Since we just used our half square triangle paper, we're gonna put our stitch length back to our normal, which is about a 1.8. I'm gonna change this foot to a quarter inch foot, and we'll just stitch this with a quarter inch seam, removing the pins as we go. And here you can see that my seam matches and when we iron that friction line will go away. Set your seam and press up toward your larger piece. And it should lie nice and flat and that seam looks great and the little pin mark went away. Now from here, we're gonna set this seam and press toward the gray go back to your design board and lay everything out and we're gonna piece this piece to this piece. There are no seams to line up, so you'll just put this right side together and pin at the left and the right and once in the middle. Set your seam, press toward the bottom and on this, it's a longer seam, and if you want to just finger press it a little bit to get it nice and flat, and then put your iron right on that seam. Let your iron sit about five seconds. Now place your stocking down, and we just need to add the fabric B rectangle to the right side. And again, I'm gonna pin at the top and the bottom, 
And this time, because it's a longer seam, I'm going to go ahead and pin twice so that it is nice and flat. Set your seam. We're almost done. Press toward the black, and then we're going to add our cuff, and our block will be done. So super easy. Just take your time building your block. So we're just going to add the cuff to the top, and there aren't any seams to line up, so just put right sides together, pin on each side, and twice in the center. And this block is a great beginner block if you're looking for something super easy to do on a weekend. This is a great block. So on your final step, just press down your seam, press to one side, and this actually needs to be pressed open because when you're joining your stockings together, there's no sashing in between. So after you press to one side, just finger press this down and then press open. I do get better results when I first press to one side and then press open after. Now here, this seam is popping up a little bit. So if you put this clapper on it while you're making your other blocks, it will come out really nice and flat. So that's your tutorial on making one stocking block. You'll make three more before we join it into a row. Now when I'm done with any block, I like to just trim the sides to get any of this excess thread off, but I like to get it nice and straight. And just a little bit should come off. You shouldn't cut into any seam allowance. And it makes your quilt overall at the end look really nice. But it's totally optional. Once you've finished sewing all of your stockings, lay them out. You've got two gray and two red separated. There's no sashing in between. You only have a sashing on the left, which is your fabric E. So you will just pin and sew your row together. And that's a gift wrap on part two of all the trimmings free mystery quilts along. Make sure to join me next Monday so you can see week three and join me every Friday for my weekly live streams. See you there.